Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to solve the five hardest maths questions that appeared in the 2019 Year 6 apps. Okay, let's get to it. Paper 2, question 22. This question actually combines a few different math skills. You can see straight away there's a graph. So this is going to um, be covering the statistics part of the national curriculum. In the question, there are two parts with separate marks. So one has got a one mark part and the other part's got two marks. So a total of three marks all together. And these are related to different areas of the national curriculum. So the first part is related to your understanding of fractions. So that comes from the number part of the national curriculum. And the second part is um, calculating the mean, which is in the statistics part of the national curriculum. So fractions ebook and the statistics ebook will be where you want to go if this question is one that you need help with. OK, let's get solving. This graph shows the maximum temperature for five days. You can see we have a graph with an x-axis and a y-axis. We have our days of the week and our y-axis shows us our temperature in degrees Celsius. This is a line graph, even though the line the, uh, it is not plotted and um, we don't have bars. You could make bars out of this. You could make a line graph out of it. We've got our points plotted. Important that it shows the maximum temperature for five days. That means on Monday... The highest temperature was 8.1. It could have gone down to 4 degrees. It could have been 3 degrees, but it didn't ever go higher than 8.1. On Tuesday, the temperature could have been a variety of temperatures, but it didn't go higher than 9.3 and so forth. OK, so first part of the question. For what fraction of the five days was the maximum temperature below 10 degrees Celsius? Now, a question like this can um, stumble a few people because it's quite wordy and you might not be sure exactly what it's asking. What I always say is to look at what you do know straight away. So go for the obvious bit, sometimes even a bit of underlining, a bit of circling. Sometimes when you just make one step, it makes the next step a bit easier. So we know we're looking for fractions. It says of the five days so that is telling us that it's out of five and there are five days there now it's asking um when was the maximum temperature below 10 degrees so if we look at our 10 degrees line here it's going to be anything that is below and you can see there are only two temperatures below we have monday and we have tuesday Two of the days have maximum temperatures below 10 degrees and there are five days altogether. And it says here what fraction of the five days. So that wants us to find a fraction out of five. So of the five days, what? Um, how many days were below 10? Two. So two days out of five. That's what that's telling us. So that is our answer two days out of five, that's two fifths, were, were the temperature, maximum temperature below 10 degrees. Okay, that's it. That's it for that question. The next one, what was the mean maximum temperature to one decimal place? So a few important things there. One is that our answer is, uh, is saying to one decimal place. So we're probably going to have an answer that has one decimal place. And then it is asking what was the mean maximum temperature. So mean is to do with averages. So this is in the statistics um, ebook. It is a specific part of the year six national curriculum. You do need to know this in year six. You need to know how to calculate the mean. You need to understand what it is and how to find it. So I'm going to quickly run through how to do it. But if you need more support, please do check out the calculating the mean lesson in my statistics ebook. OK, so for the mean maximum temperature, we need all five of our temperatures and um, we need to add them all up and then we need to divide them by how many there are. So there are five days, so we're going to divide it by five. So we add Monday to Friday temperatures up and we divide it by five days. So I'm going to zoom in on my square because I would expect you to be jotting down your working out on your squares when you're working in your paper. But I'm going to zoom in just for ease of working on a computer. 
Okay, so I've zoomed in and what I've done is I've written down all of the temperatures. Um, make sure when you are jotting down your temperatures, put the plus symbol there, that you line up your digits correctly. So all my tenths are in one column, all my ones are in one column and all my tens are in one column. That's really important because that's where you could trip up with your um, final answer. So to get the answer, I'm actually just going to put it in a different colour just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, this is not important when you're doing your stats. Now, when I add, you could just add 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 9 is 13, etc. But I like to group together if I see any number bonds. So I've got 1 and 9 there. I just find that easier myself. So 1 and 9 is 10, plus 3 is 13, plus 8 is 21, plus 4 is 25. Now, I appreciate I might be adding up quicker than you are um but i'm not going through lessons on how to add at the moment i do have lots of lessons of that in my number calculation ebooks i'm just going to be showing you the methods so here again we've got number bond here we've got number bond there so i've got eight and two is ten nine and one is ten so that's 20 plus my one is 22 plus my two is 23 then i've got one two three plus the two is five so 53.5, that's not your answer. So uh, a, a lot of times I saw this put in the answer box because you get so caught up in the adding of the five digits that you forget to do the next step, which is to take your answer and to divide it by the number of values. So in this case, the number of values is the number of days um, and that is five. So I'm using a bus stop and going to divide it by five. So five into five goes once, five into three does not go. I need to put my decimal point there and I'm going to carry my three because I didn't use it. And five into 35 goes seven. If you're not sure how to do division with decimals, then check out my number calculation ebook. I go through all sorts of things to do with multiplying, dividing, dividing with long num uh, big numbers, long division, short division, and dividing with decimals. So my answer is 10.7. And I'm just going to check, is it one decimal place? Yes, it is. Okay, so that is how you get your three marks on that first question. Paper 2, question 23. Amina made this cuboid using centimetre cubes. And we have a cuboid which is drawn and we have some labelled dimensions. Now, something very important to note here is this not actual size. You will see this a lot in exam papers, not just the SATs, even in your GCSEs. What this is basically telling you is do not try and use a ruler to answer this question. There will be no measurement because it is not to scale. It's not the actual size. You need to find your answer from the clues in the information given. Okay, so you're using maths and the information given to find your answer. So we have a visualisation and we have some dimensions. Those are going to be important. Stefan makes a cuboid that is five centimetres longer, five centimetres taller and five centimetres wider than Amina's cuboid. What is the difference between the number of cubes in Amina and Stefan's cubes? Difference is in bold, so that means that's an important part of the information. What I saw uh, done a lot is people calculated the size of Stefan's cube and wrote that as the answer. What the question is asking you to do is to find the difference. Now, this has two marks, so there are different um, stages to this question do show your working out. So the first thing we want to do is a, a lot of times we can just rush to try and do the answer. We want to work through the steps. So what do we know? We know the size of Amina's cuboid, but do we know how many cubes she uses? Because essentially it's asking us the difference between how many cubes are in her cuboid and Stefan's cuboid. We don't actually know how many cubes she has in her cuboid yet, we just have the dimensions. So to find the volume, if you don't know how to calculate volume, that is in my um, measurement ebook. Okay, we have about using the area for form, uh, so three, the formula for area and volume and how to calculate volumes. So to find the volume, you multiply your three dimensions. Okay, we do four by six by three. Um, the reason, I'll quickly go through the reason is, if I looked at this front face here, 
I could just do four times six to see that there are 24 cubes at the front. But then you can see that there are, if we think about it as slices, there's another slice along here. And then there is another slice along there. So that should have gone in a different colour. Another slice along there. Each slice is 24. So we've got 24, then another slice of 24, then another slice of 24. So you're doing 24 times 3. Okay, but you're just multiplying those three numbers. You're doing 4 times 6 times 3. You also don't need to do it in that order. You could do it in any order. You could do it 4 times 3 times 6. You could do 3 times 6 times 4. All of these will give you the same answer. Okay, so 4 times 6 is 24. And then you might be able to do that in your head, 24 times 3, or you might need to do a short multiplication. Don't think that you will get more marks if you do things in your head because actually when you're under um, pressure, it's really easy to um, get answers wrong that you wouldn't when you had lots of time. So it's just as quick to do a, a calculation like this, okay? Um, you're not gonna lose marks and sometimes it's quicker and you know, and if it's slightly slower, but it's accurate, you're better off, okay? So two times three is six plus the one is seven. So I know that a mean is cubed, so I'm just going to write A equals 72 centimeters cubed. Very important you write that cubed there because there's three dimensions, so we put a cubed. Um, so we know how many cubes a Mina's cube has. That's part one. We now need to know how many cubes Stefan's has got. Now, we don't have a drawing of Stefan's cuboid. You don't necessarily need a drawing, but I would actually recommend to draw one. So I would just draw his cuboid, and it does not need to be neat at all. Just very rough. Okay, and I'm going to draw in his dimensions. Now, the nice thing about this question is you're not worrying about, oh, which bit's the dimension, which bit is the length and which bit's the height and which bit's the width, because all of them are just having five added to them. So nice and easy. So if I look at the height, which was four, I add five, well, that's nine. If I look at my width, um, that's six, if I add five, that's 11. And if I look at the depth of the cuboid, that was three, it's now eight. So we haven't got to worry about what's the depth, what's the height, what's the width. When they say longer, which part of the cuboid is that? We're just adding five to all of those numbers that I've got in red. So Stefan's cuboid is nine, eleven, and eight. Now to find the dimension, uh, to find the area, the volume, sorry, we just need to multiply all three as we did before. We're just doing nine times eleven times eight. As I said before, you can change this order up whichever way you like. You could do nine times 11 times eight. You could do nine times eight times 11. You could do 11 times eight times nine, whichever way you want. I'm going to do nine times 11 times eight because I know nine times 11 is 99, nice and easy. So I just need to do 99 times eight and I'm going to do a short multiplication. So eight times nine or nine times eight is 72. And again, nine times eight is 72 plus the seven is 79. So I now know that Stefan's, I'm gonna write to the top, Stefan's cube, cuboid is 792 centimeters cube. So I'm just gonna zoom in on the square and label those both up on the square quickly. So I've just labelled up that Amina's cuboid is 72 centimetres cubed. She has 72 cubes. Stefan's um, cuboid is 70, 792 centimetres cubed. And actually, you don't even need to write that 7 centimetres cubed. That's just my habit because that is how you write volume. Um, Amina's ha cuboid has 72 cubes and Stefan's cuboid has 792 cubes. We're looking for the difference. So that means it doesn't matter if we're finding how many less Amina's got or how many more Stefan's got, they're both the same answer. We're looking for the difference between their two numbers. Finding the difference is a subtraction. So we're just going to take the larger number and we're going to subtract the smaller number. Okay, remember with finding the difference, we always, unless it's a, um, something to do with negative numbers, um, we are generally putting the larger number first.
Okay, so I'm just going to use a different color for the answer. So two take away two is zero, nine take away seven is two, and seven take away nothing is seven. So there is a difference of 720. Amina has 720 cubes less. Stefan has 720 cubes more. The difference is 720 cubes. Now for this answer, which was two marks, if you had have just at least shown that Stefan had 792 cubes in his cuboids, you could have picked up a mark. So do make sure that you do all your working out, that you label each part, because you never know, even if you get to the wrong answer at the end, you could still pick up a valuable mark. Paper three, question 21. A, B, D, E is a rectangle on coordinate axes. The sides of the rectangle are parallel to the axes. Point C is the, rec is the center of the rectangle. You can see that we have our axes, we have our rectangle, and we have some the points there, and we have some of the points labeled with coordinates. What are the coordinates of B and D? So our job is to find the coordinates of B and D, which are not labeled. Again, take note of this, not to scale. This means don't try and use a ruler. You'll not be able to find the answer um, in any way other than using the information. So the math skills in this are understanding properties of shape. So understanding what a rectangle is, um, understanding what parallel means, um, understanding center, um, and then the other part of it is also to do with geometry. It's to do with um, position, which is the coordinate. So understanding axes, which is also in statist um, statistics and understanding how we find coordinates. Um, these are all in my geometry ebook. So geometry ebook has got things to do with properties of shape and it also has lessons on coordinates. OK, so I am going to talk through how to solve this. But if any part of it seems a bit confusing, then you need to check out that ebook. OK, let's get started. So we know that ABC, ABD is a rectangle. And the fact that the sides are parallel is very important. What that means is that, for example, uh, this line A to E and B to D are not sloping away um, from the Y axis. OK, they are the same distance from the y-axis all the way down from A to E. So point E is the same distance from the y-axis. It's going to be at the same point on the x-axis all the way along. And B to D, that's also going to be at the same point on the x-axis all the way down from B to D. That's really important information. Um, in exactly the same way, if we look at point A to D, A to B, sorry, um, B is going to be exactly at, at exactly the same point on the y-axis as A is. D is going to be, actually if I just draw all the way along, it's going to be exactly the same point on the y-axis. D is the same point on the y-axis as E, okay, because they are parallel. That's what them being parallel is telling us. It's telling us that we've we can use the information there to find out the missing information. So I'm going to delete all of that now so that it's clear when I'm doing my working out. So we're going to use our clues like a trail of breadcrumbs. And the first clue I'm going to use is this, point A, um, to find out what point B is. And B is written first, so it's a clue that you want to find B first, okay? So I don't know how long this side from A to B is. And I need that to be able to figure out um, what B is. But some things that I do know, if I just quickly draw my brackets here, and I'm looking for two coordinates, I'm looking for my X and Y uh, coordinates. What I do know, what we said earlier on, is that the Y axis coordinate is going to be the same as A, isn't it? Because they are parallel. So I already know... So I already know the, uh, sorry, the y axis, x, y is going to be 30. I know this is the same as A because it's the same height as A, the height doesn't change. All I need to know is where it is on the x axis. Okay, so I know that A is here and this is 25. B is over here. That's the bit I need to find out. I don't know how far along it is. However, I've got a clue. 
because I know that point C is um, at 40. So this is at 25. This is at 40. So here is 25 and here is 40. So that's 25. And what I know is that um, C is the centre. So if it's the centre, that means it's halfway across and halfway between up and down. So I know it's halfway across, okay? So if I know that from um, 25 to 40 is halfway, well, that is a distance of 15, isn't it? That is a distance of 15. So if I was to mark it up the top here from A, from A to halfway is 15. That means the other distance is also going to be 15. Okay, so from 40, we're gonna to have to add another 15 to get to where B and D are. So that means I'm adding 30 to my original coordinate of 25 or I'm adding 15 to this halfway point of 40. Okay, so 25 plus 30 is 55, 40 plus 15 is 55. So that's how I find that coordinate. Okay, I've used the halfway point to tell me how long that rectangle is. Another way you can think about it is if I was to draw the rectangle, that's gonna look more like a parallelogram. Let me move. Okay, so I've drawn a rectangle here instead. If we had to think about the size of this, I know that that is 30 across because halfway was 15. Now, if I want to think about this dimension of this rectangle, um, I can use my y-axis um, coordinates. So, so very quickly, under D, if I was to write D in now, I know that D shares the same x-axis coordinate as, D, as B. So I can write in my 55 because I know that B and D are at the same point. What I need to find out is where it is on the y-axis, it's below D at uh, B. D is below B on the y-axis. So we are going to use the clue from A and C to help us with this as well. So if we look at this y-axis part, so B is there and C is halfway, it's there. And if we were to write those in, um, that was that's at 30, that's at 22, okay? So that is a difference of eight. So halfway along my rectangle is eight, which means there's another journey of eight to do. So in total, that's 16, okay? So I now know the size of that size of my rectangle. So I can either, subtract 16 from 30. Remember, I've got to subtract because it's lower, or I can subtract eight from my 22. So 30 subtract 16 is 14, and we just double check 22 subtract eight is also 14. Okay, so I've used my the A coordinate, the X part of my A coordinate, and the X part of my C coordinate to find out what half of the width is. And I've used the Y coordinate of A and the Y coordinate of C to find out what half of the height is. And then I've been able to figure out the size of my whole rectangle and then subtract and add onto those coordinates to find the coordinates of B and D. And then I must remember to type in, um, in write in the answer box. So B is 55, 30, and D is 55, 14. And you can see they are separate marks, so you get a mark for each of those. Do label, 
Do do things like I've done there, draw the rectangle elsewhere and label it up. All of these things will help you um, and you do not get penalised for doing any drawing or annotating on your stats paper. I would highly recommend you label as much as you can because it will really help you to um, keep track of your different clues that you're finding along the way. Paper three, question 22. Six identical right angle triangles are arranged to make a rectangle. So we have a drawing here and you can see there are inside it uh, one, two, three, four, five, six right angle triangles and very important, they are identical. Okay, this is important, they're identical and they are arranged to make a rectangle. We need to calculate the length of the rectangle. So we need to find this dimension here. Uh, if you are um, struggling a little bit with properties of shape, then check out my geometry ebook. I go through all the shapes you need to know. Triangles, really important, different types of triangles. Quadrilaterals, very important to know, understand the difference between the different types of quadrilaterals, like their rules, their properties, what makes them all unique. OK, so let's have a look at the clues we've got here. Now, with anything like this, it can look intimidating to start with. Um, also, just check out this not actual size means don't try and use a ruler. You must use the information. OK, now what I always say when something looks intimidating, just start with something, you know, just anything, you know. OK, so what I would start with is, OK, we are told about this seven centimetres here. That's something we know. What can we find there where it says seven centimetres that will be helpful? Now, what I can see that is quite helpful is that it's got the base of the, these two triangles. Um, what might also be quite helpful is to draw out the triangle separately and it does not matter if it's not neat okay it's just for labeling so I can see um, from my seven centimeters that that is the width that is two bases of a rectangle so what that tells me is half of that seven is going to be one of the bases of one rectangle is the base of one rectangle so half of seven is 3.5 so I know that one rectangle is 3.5 and they are identical which means all of them are 3.5 on the base okay and I definitely know that because two of them together make seven okay so that's what this bit tells me now is there anything else or any other bits of information because we need to find the height of this rectangle okay if you look over a little bit further you will see that actually look we've got the height of a triangle there and that height is exactly um, the width of the or the height of the rectangle so it's also seven centimeters okay I definitely know that because it's definitely labeled that is the same height so I can write next to my triangle now seven centimeters so I definitely definitely know the size of each of those six identical right angle triangles now. Now, if I just quickly um, highlight these, color code these just so it makes sense when I'm doing some calculating at what I'm doing, so you can visualize what I'm doing. So I've done the height in green and the base in purple. You can see along the bottom, this section is a base and this section is a height, okay? Because the, the triangles, sorry, are rearranged in that rectangle in different dimensions. But you can see that that, that um, length that we're trying to find out is made up of the height of the rectangle and the base of the rectangle. So again, if we were to label that, this part is seven centimeters and this part is three and a half centimeters. So to find the whole length, all we have to do is add those two numbers together. So you might be able to do that in your head, or you might need to do a, a little addition. Remember, it does not matter if in a test you suddenly have a bit of a blank and you need to write things down that you could normally do in your head. It's better to get it accurate. OK, so if we were to add that up, that's 0.5 and that is 10. So my answer is 10.5 centimetres. Paper three, question 23. 
The distance from point P to point R is 800 metres. You can see we have a line drawn. Along the line, we have three points labelled. We've got point P, Q and R. And very importantly, we've got this not to scale uh, message, which means don't try and use a ruler. You must use the information. The distance from point P to point Q is four times the distance from point Q to point R. Olive says it is 600 metres from point P to point Q. Explain why Olivia is not correct. So we're told that Olivia's statement is incorrect. You have to prove why. OK, so these questions can sometimes throw us a little bit because um, we're thinking, do we have to do the maths? Do we have to calculate what the answer is. Um, but you're actually just trying to prove why she is wrong. So this is a ratio question. This, um, the answers to this or the information that you need to learn is in my ratio ebook. There are quite a few different areas in ratio and it is important. It's something that comes up a lot when you get to year seven, eight and nine. So there are a few different ways to approach this as there always are. Now you could try and just figure out what um, point P to Q is yourself. However, it's a lot easier to prove her wrong, to prove Olivia wrong by using her information and just testing it out. OK, so we are told that the distance from point P to point R is 800 metres. So we know the total distance. Um, we're then told that from point P to Q is four times the distance from point R. Q to R. Now you can see that point P to Q is bigger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the two different points out. So do point P to Q and then separately I'm going to draw and not even connected um, point Q to R. Okay so point P to Q and then to R. So if we know it's four times the distance, if we were thinking about ratio we could say that's four to one. Okay, so we know that from four, P to Q will be four times more than Q to R. Now, Olivia has said it's 600 metres from point P to Q. So let's test out what she is saying. Okay, so it's very e it's much easier to test out someone's theory. So if we were to say, let's say she, we thought she was right, that this is 600. I'm going to write it underneath the four. Uh, 600 m well if it's four times bigger than q to r that means q to r is going to be four times smaller so what we need to do is divide 600 by four to find out what point q to r would be okay because we are told here the distance from point p to q is four times the distance from point q to r because that bit is a given so that bit is correct so if P to Q is 600, then point Q to R would need to be 600 divided by 4. So you could do a bus stop, 600 divided by 4, or you might halve it and halve it again. So 4 into 6 goes once, there's a remainder of 2. 4 into 20 goes 5, and 4 into 0 goes nothing, 150. Half of 600 is 300, half of 300 is 150. So if, we, if um, Olivia was correct, then... If P to Q is 600, then that means Q to R is 150, because that means that the first part is four times more than the second part. Now, if that was correct, if we add up those two lines, 600 and 150, we can see 0, 5, 7, that that can't be right because that would only mean a line of 750. And that would be enough to write that as an explanation. Um, first of all, to label it like that, you're showing what, you, what you've done. And then to say, if point to Q, P to Q was 600 metres, point Q to R would have to be 150 metres. And that would only be a total distance of 750 metres. That would be enough to say as your explanation. I'll type it out so that you can see it. So something along the lines of this is fine, but do show you're working out because that in itself is an explanation. You're showing that um, if the first part was 600 you're sh and the second part is 150, you've shown that you understand it's four times more. And then you have to show that you've added them together, which also proves that she's wrong because we know that it needs to be 800. 
Okay, so I've just written there an example, one example of what you could do. You may have also tried to actually calculate what point Q to R is, um, and you may have done that by um, using ratio. You may have thought, okay, well, if um, P to Q is four and Q to R is one, that makes a total of five. So you know there's five parts. If you divide your 800 by five parts, um, then you could also find out what each part is, is worth. So 800 divided by five is 160. So one part is 160. Um, let me just make that a bit neater. Uh, so four lots of 160, 400, and four times 60 is 240 is 640. And if you add those together, 640 and 160 is 800. You may have found um, the actual answer by th like that. And in that case, that would be fine as well. But what you could say, you would have to write that out um, as um, the distance from P to R is made up of five parts. Q to R, 800 divided by five is 160. Q to R is 160, therefore point P to Q has to be 640 metres. Olivia is not correct. 600 metres is too short. OK, so you can do it like that. You could find the right answer and then use your correct answer to show why she's wrong. But it is often a lot easier just to put Olivia's answer into the equation and then figure out what it is why it's wrong. This is basically like using a check calculation. If you did an addition and you got an answer and then you just did a subtraction to see if your answer was correct. So it's using a check calculation to prove why she is wrong. But any explanation where you're showing that you understand ratio will get you a correct answer, will get you that mark. There we go. I hope you have found this video useful. Please do like and subscribe if you would like to watch for more tips on how to solve questions in the SATS papers. And don't forget to check out my SATS ebooks. If you're looking for some effective revision to help you with your math SATS, then check out the Pocket Private Tutor Shop. I have SATS ebooks and I have revision courses. The SATS ebooks cover every single thing from the year six national curriculum so you can be sure that nothing will appear in the paper that you haven't learned. Each ebook comes with a video which you can watch on a laptop, on a tablet, on your phone. You can even cast it to your smart TV if you want to watch it big. I have worksheets to help you practice the skill and included our past SATS question examples. That means when you're learning a new math skill, I also include how that has looked in an actual SATS paper before. I also have some revision courses. I have practice arithmetic tests. I have loads of stuff that's going to help you to absolutely smash your SATS. So check out the Pocket Private Tutor Shop and download the course that's going to help you now.